these are the lesson 8.4 notes, properties of logarithms. Today we're going to compare how exponents and logarithms have this special relationship in terms of different rules that apply to exponents have similar rules that apply to logarithms as well. So we'll take a look at these. Uh, we'll talk about how you can write expressions as single logarithms or expand logarithms out into longer expressions. First of all, I want to come back to the relationship between an exponential equation and a logarithmic equation. In an exponential form equation, we have y equals b to the x power. We have an x in the exponent. In a logarithmic form equation, we have the log base b of y equals x. The base in both of these problems is b. It's kind of a number that's kind of underneath another number. In exponential form, this base is underneath the exponent. In logarithmic form, this base is kind of underneath the logarithm word. Uh, in an exponential form equation, the x is in the exponent. In a logarithmic form equation, the x and the y switch places. Now you may recall when working with exponents, if you have the same base, you're allowed to add exponents. b to the x times b to the y equals b to the x plus y power. You may commonly know that if you take x cubed times x squared, you are allowed to add these exponents and get x to the fifth power. And we know this is true because if you're multiplying three x's times another two x's, you end up with five x's altogether. It makes sense. There's a similar rule when working with logarithms. The log of the product equals the sum of the log. If you have the log base b of x times y, this also can get written as an addition problem, that problem being the log base b of x plus the log base b of y. So similar to what we had with exponents, you can do a similar type of thing with logarithms. If you're dividing exponents, you may remember that the, if you take the same base, you're allowed to subtract exponents in the division problem. b to the x over b to the y equals b to the x minus y. This means if you have x to the sixth power over x squared, we don't divide the exponents, we subtract them. 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. Why does this make sense? Well, if you have 6 x's up on top and you have 2 x's on the bottom, you can cancel two on the top and two on the bottom, and you're left with four altogether. We have a similar rule dealing with logarithms. The log of the quotient equals the difference of the logs. If you have the log base b of x over y, you can turn this into a subtraction problem as well. The log base b of x minus the log base b of y. That's a valid move with logarithms as well. Here's another rule that we work with with exponents that has a comparable logarithmic rule as well. Take the power of a power. If you have b to the x power to the y power, you're allowed to multiply the exponents together, essentially getting rid of the parentheses. So in a case where we have x cubed squared, we are allowed to multiply the exponents here, x to the 3 times 2 power, and this is equal to x to the 6 power. Why does this make sense? Well, if you have x cubed, that's like 3x's, and if you square it, you're multiplying it by itself. And you end up with 6 altogether. So that works. Similar rule when working with logarithms. If you have log base b to the x to the y power, let me say that again, log base b of x to the y power, what you're allowed to do is turn this into a multiplication problem. So we have an exponent problem that turns into a multiplication problem. What you're allowed to do is you're allowed to take this exponent and turn it into a coefficient. Essentially, you move it to the front of this problem. So this y moves out front, turns into a multiplier or a scalar, and we're going to multiply it times the log base b of x. So in logarithmic form, you're allowed to take this exponent and move it out to the front and turn it into a multiplier. So we're going to apply some of these rules when writing expressions as single logarithms. When ex writing expressions as single logarithms, basically two strategies. First, move exponents to the ex move coefficients to the exponent. So we're going to sort of undo this rule we just talked about. If you have a coefficient, a number out front, you are allowed to move it to the exponent. Sometimes that allows you to shrink down a logarithm. We'll, we'll show how that happens in just a moment. Then we'll use some of the product and quotient rules that we illustrated in numbers one and two. So in this first problem, we're going to start by moving these coefficients to the exponent. This 3, this 2, and this 2 will all become exponents. 
So right now what we have is we have the log of 1 cubed plus the log of 2 squared plus the log of 5 squared. This is our first step in turning this problem with three logarithms into a single logarithm. Now you can actually crunch these out. These are powers of things you should know. So you should know what 1 cubed, 2 squared, and 5 squared are. So we're going to rewrite this problem with these simplified numbers. 1 cubed, 2 squared, 5 squared. Now we're going to use our product and quotient rules. Right now we have an addition problem. You remember that addition problems link up with multiplication problems. Right now we have something that kind of resembles this and I want to get it so it resembles something like this. We have a double log here, we're going to turn it into a single log in the shortcut. Um, in our problem we have three things being added together so what you're allowed to do is turn this addition problem into a multiplication problem. So because we're adding the same base log base 10, log base 10, log base 10 of 1, 4, and 25 you're actually allowed to turn this into a multiplication problem. This is sort of the opposite way that was described here. Here we took a multiplication, turn it to addition, but you can go vice versa as well. So what we really have is the log of 1 times 4 times 25. And if you multiply these things together, 1 times 4 is 4 times 25 is 100. And this is written as a single log. By the way, I bet you know what this equals. This actually equals 2. But as a single logarithm, this is the answer we're looking for. In the second problem, same idea. We're going to move each of these coefficients into the exponent. So what we start with is the log base 3 of 6 squared minus the log base 3 of 16 to the 1 half power. Now 6 squared, we know that's 36. So this is the log base 3 of 36 minus the log base 3, 16 to the 1 half power. The number on the bottom is the root, so we're going to take the second root, or the square root of 16, which is 4, to the first power, which is just 4 still. We have a subtraction problem with two logs. You may recall that subtraction problems have this relationship with division. So just like you can turn division into subtraction, we can turn subtraction back into division again. So what we're going to do, because they have the same base, it's a log base 3, is we're going to write this as log base 3 of 36 over 4. Which, of course, you can simplify. 36 over 4 equals log base 3 of 9. And you might know what this equals as well, but our task here is to write this as a single logarithm, which we've done. By the way, this would equal 2 if you were to actually crunch this out. Expanding logarithms means instead of writing multiple log problems as a single log, we're going to take a single log and expand it out into multiple logarithms. So we're sort of undoing the rules we just talked about. We're first going to use our product and quotient rules to expand these multiplication and division problems into addition and subtraction problems. And then at the end, we'll move our exponent back into the coefficient. It's sort of undoing what we just did. For example, in this first problem, we have three logarithms here, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this multiplication into addition, and then we'll turn this division into subtraction. What does it look like? Well, we're going to start with log of this a squared term. Multiply means we can turn it into addition, so this will be plus log of c cubed. And division turns into subtraction, minus log of b to the fourth power. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to move these exponents out front. So this 2, this 3, and this 4 are all going to move in front to become coefficients. And we're going to get 2 log of a plus 3 log of c minus 4 log of b. And if you've done these problems correctly, you shouldn't have any exponents. It should be logs of single values, more or less. Here's a little more complicated looking problem. We have the log base 2 of 16 square root of x cubed. Now, the first thing you have to realize is that the 16 is being multiplied by this square root here. Now, the square root can be rewritten as a fraction exponent. So we're going to actually do that here. We're going to rewrite this. This is x cubed. It's a square root. So you may recall that you write this as a 
rational exponent or a fraction exponent, x, our power is still 3, our root is 2, that goes in the denominator. Now we have a multiplication problem, which we can turn into addition. Log base 2 of 16 plus log base 2 of x to the 3 halves power. Now the log base 2 of 16, you can leave like this, or you can think of 2 to what power equals 16? So if you just want to say 4, that's fine. Plus, you can move this exponent out front again, and we have 3 halves times log base 2 of x. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to expand logarithms, take the log of a value to a power. Here we have log in parentheses 3x to the fourth power. Now one way of expanding this out is to move this 4 out front. It's our coefficient, so you could say this is 4 times the log of parentheses 3x. Then because we have a multiplication problem, you can turn this into addition. So this would be 4 times the log of 3 plus the log of x. Now the 4 is getting multiplied by this entire logarithm. So really what we should be doing is putting this in parentheses. And then you can distribute the 4 times the log of 3 plus 4 times the log of x. And that's one way of solving this problem. Here's another way of solving the same problem. You may recall that if you are taking an expression that involves multiplication to a power, it's sort of like you're allowed to distribute this exponent to each of these factors in this product. So you could say that this expression is the same thing as the log of 3 to the fourth power times x to the fourth power. That's a valid move here, kind of distributing, more or less, kind of like distributing the exponent. Now because this is a multiplication problem, you can write it as an addition problem. So we have the log of 3 to the fourth plus the log of x to the fourth. And then you can conclude this by moving the exponent to the front. 4 log 3 plus 4 log x. Got the same answer here that we did here. Two different ways of solving the same problem. And this wraps up how you can compare exponents and logarithms using similar shortcuts that we've used in the past.